giving thanks and high praise. Welcome back everybody. We are going in on some very sacred signs and symbols. We will be talking about Pi and how many uh, sorted means and ways that Pi is honored uh, in our culture and also very much in the uh, Hebrew culture. I want to put out a disclaimer right now that I do not assert that anybody has any uh, malice or uh, evil intentions. Uh, that is not my place to presume or project onto anybody. My intention is to generate overstanding. Uh, to to be a bridge uh, between, you know, uh, many different languages. Uh, I probably have never mentioned any of this, but, you know, uh, I am not fluent in any language other than English, but I am uh, a little better than a novice in quite a few languages. Uh, and I aspire to uh, accomplish... Uh, some achievement in quite a few other languages uh, throughout my life. I'm not going to get into that list, but uh, this is just uh, part of sharing what I have learned and what little dabbling in other languages I have done. And I want to bring it to bear in the context of Pi. And, you know, uh, we'll start with the concept of Pisces, you know, Jesus. The uh, Jesus, the sign of Jesus is the fish. Uh, the sign of Pisces is the fish, the two fish. Um, and I'll just put it out there right now that 227 is uh, seven days after uh, the beginning of the sign of Pisces. And so uh, to some degree, one could say that uh, Pisces is where uh, Pi can be seen in a standard uh, American calendar expression, 2-27. There's also uh, Pi Day, 3.14, which is, I believe, let me look at that. Yep, that's in Pisces. 3.14 is in Pisces, technically. Just six days before that spring equinox. So, 2... Two seven and three one four, both of those very sacred numbers uh, fall in the sign of Pisces. So, culturally speaking, you could say that Christianity holds Pi to be uh, deeply sacred, and many aspects of Christian myth, uh, mysticism uh, embodies the sacred concepts of Pi. Absolutely no doubt about that. I want to uh, put forward that uh, the uh, the Judaism also holds Pi to be incredibly sacred. Um, and we will do that by uh, just mentioning that, you know, the, the, word, the letter in Hebrew, Tav, which is the T. It is the 22nd letter in the ancient Hebrew alphabet, which in ancient Hebrew was the last letter of their alphabet. Uh, in modern context, they have added five more vowels to the alphabet, which makes it very complicated. It's actually hard to find uniformity in the expression of the Hebrew alphabet today. But in a classical context, 22nd letter, it was the end, the foundation. It was the feet. The, the, it was st the standing of the uh, statue of the word of the Hebrew God. Um, so it also means in Hebrew, truth, sign. And then it has some duality here. It could mean life or it can mean death. Uh, you should maybe look that up. I am not qualified to tell you exactly why it has the dual meaning other than the fact that it is much like 
two feet, as we I mentioned. Uh, Tav is uh, somewhat considered uh, to symbolize the tribe of Dan, and the tribe of Dan is the foundation, the bottom, the feet of the Jewish people. Uh, it does the work. It upholds the body of Judaism. So, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, Tav is the T. It is the 22nd letter, uh, and it consists of a Dalith, which is the D, and a Nun, uh, which is uh, very much like an N. Uh, so that's why it comes across as representing the tribe of D-A-N, the tribe of Dan. Uh, now, I will throw out quite a few correlations, correspondences to that concept of the tribe of Dan. Uh, they are sometimes referred to as the tribe of Danoi. Uh, I believe that when they refer to the Denisovians, they are not necessarily referring to the tribe of Dan. They are referring to the fundamental, the bottom. If you were uh, digging up the layers of history from the earth, the bottom layer would be the Denisovians. Um, and that would be much like embodying the feet, the foundation of... Uh, uh, archaeology and anthropology. So, uh, one good example, modern day example, is Denmark. Uh, the Denmark would have a very strong tribe of Dan influence, and that is where the name comes from. Uh, also, I do believe Denver is another aspect of uh, representing the tribe of Dan. Um, and I just, you know, this one occurs to me quite often. Tribe of Dan is T-O-D, Todd, um, and that has many meanings, uh, but it, in my mind, uh, may have a lot to do with when we say uh, today, T-O-D-A-Y. Uh, Ayan is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so in a very strange way, because Hebrew is in reverse, you have the end with the T and the A-N is the beginning. It, if you were to reverse this, this would be A through T. Uh, so, uh, many, many aspects of our language give significance to the concept of pi. Um, I would say that in English, it is the 20th, <laughs> the letter T is the 20th letter. And you'll see that I made my double T's as a pi symbol. Um, but 20, I will point out, is twin T, equaling this arch, this double T archway. And that is the beginning of a very complex series of numbers, an infinite series of numbers. It could be considered a bit of an archway. So in language, I didn't write any good examples down. I wish I had a you will find that words like attorney, uh, words like letter, uh, it involves the initiation of a journey, the initiation of an expression of understanding, of something being conveyed, of, uh, you could almost say the voice of God speaking to humanity through the concept of pi. And... Uh, I won't go too far into that. You take it, you can leave it, whichever, uh, whichever serves you best. Uh, but yeah, the, if you look up the Tav, this word Tav, the letter T, Tav, you will see that it does represent the tribe of Dan, um, which is the feet of the Jewish people. Uh, but I'll point out that the 22nd, excuse me, the 20th card in... The tarot is the judgment card, XX, uh, and that judgment card is essentially in Taurus, so there's another T uh, incorporated into the uh, tarot of the 20th card, the judgment card, in the tribe of Dan, uh, tribe of Danoi. So... Trying to bring this full circle into modern day context. How does this have anything to do with us today? Uh, I've mentioned this before, but I believe that, you know, in the Loki movie, 
the TVA is call, is the time variant authority. And here's that authority. There's two T's there. Um, going back to the attorney, the letters, the bringing forth of a message, uh, the voice of God speaking to humanity. Um, uh, but that time variant authority, I believe, is a throwback to Tav. And it could very well be referring to Tavistock. If you've been watching the Loki series, you will probably agree that the TVA is behaving much like our understanding today of what Tavistock was all about, maintaining the sacred timeline. Uh, see my previous videos for a little more in-depth uh, perspective on that. But Tavi is very interesting. Tava stock, stock, we talked about livestock. That's, you know, the slaves, the, the uh, lower beings, the goyim. Uh, well, Tavila means baptize. I've talked about this before. It means uh, ablutions, to duck, to duck a person under the water, um, to initiate... Uh, some communication, the ability to hear God, uh, to cleanse you so that you are worthy to hear the voice of God, to understand what uh, this very dynamic number uh, really truly means. So whenever we're dealing with, so I believe Tavila ties back to Tavi of Tavistock, but whenever we're dealing with Tavistock, uh, some supporting evidence that we are dealing with baptizing is the fact that we're always dealing with initiation. See, there's your two T's again. You're beginning a journey into understanding. And you got four I's, two N's. There's a lot going on in that, in that uh, particular word. Um, but here are some patterns of Tavistock initiating humanity of the world. And that is the doors. Doors signify a beginning, an archway of initiation. The beetles, I mentioned this in a very early video, that goes back to the Kepri beetle, the dung beetle of Egyptian uh, creation myth. And the dung beetle of creation myth, it is a very early beginning of the story. It is the earliest beginning of the story. So here we are dealing with initiation, the beginning, the first fruits. Rolling stone goes back to that Kepri beetle. The dung beetle rolling up its uh, feces uh, into a perfect sphere, uh, generating the uh, shape of perfection, the O, uh, and gates. We have talked about this all before. Gates, that's no, no coinky dink right there. We are dealing with initiation. He wants to enter your gates. He wants to penetrate your skin. He wants to get your consent. He wants to baptize you so that you are worthy to receive the information of what the hell ever is in that shot. So speaking of needles and pointy things, uh, let's talk about the fact that the only uh, letter that is consistent in the cardinal directions, cardinal is the cardinal cross is the pointed cross. The only letter that is consistent in the four cardinal directions is the letter T. North, south, east, west. It is the fundamental of a very complex concept. And here we are dealing with Panta Arithmos. All is number. And for anybody who has any hesitation that there is significance behind Gamatria, uh, look into Pythagoras and you will deeply appreciate what I've laid out here in the fact that numbers are everywhere. And just to circle back, these are the four cardinal directions. Well, it turns out, you know, two plus two, that's four. And in Hebrew, the word uh, tavi is uh, signified as uh, gematriologically meaning uh, the number 400. And that is many places, many uses in uh, the story of the Talmud in the Old Testament. So here's a little bit of Talmud I want to bring forward. And this has much to do with tribe of Dan being the feet or the fundamental of the Jewish people, the bottom, uh, that which lags behind. 
in the Talmud, it says, Who is called a fool? One who loses what Ma has been, has been given to him. And that, I know that's uh, clunky wording, but that is how it was uh, conveyed to me. I feel like it may be some stenographic, uh, steganographic communication in that the grammar is off. I don't think it is an accident. Ma, uh, a lot of us would see that as the matrix, the mother figure, the divine feminine. Um, but I was conveyed when I looked it up to mean humility. Ma means humility. Uh, and I would point out that here we have that hume, costume, posthumous, presume. Uh, I believe, uh, and I know I always get back onto the placenta, but the placenta is that which was given to you. And you would be a fool to lose it, according to this proverb right here. And we are talking about humanity, you know, the hue of man, your aura, the, that, the light around you, uh, that which illuminates your uh, higher self. So a lot of food for thought in this. Um, and I'll just close it off there. I hope it brought a little more light and a little more perspective into my understanding of number, symbol, uh, you know, sacred concepts cross-culturally. Like I said, I'm not accusing anybody in particular of having any nefarious intentions, but I do believe that Tavistock uh, has uh, practiced some profound overreach and it is a very good thing to keep their influence over your mentality quite in check. Much love, my people. Strength.